Shawn Michaels, real name Michael Shawn Heckenbottom, was born on July 22nd, 1965 in Chandler, Arizona. He was the youngest of four children and was raised in a military family and spent a brief part of his early years in Reading, Berkshire, England, but grew up in San Antonio, Texas. As a child, he disliked the name Michael, so his family and friends just called him Sean. And ever since, he has been referred to as Sean. In 1984, Michaels began to train under the Mexican professional wrestler Jose Lothario. After his training with Lothario, he debuted as Shawn Michaels with the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance. Michaels' performance in his debut match impressed many veterans, including Terry Taylor. Before Michael signed to the WWE, he would have a stint in Texas All-Star Wrestling and the AWA, the American Wrestling Association. After initially signing to the WWE in 1987 and being fired two weeks later, the Rockers would officially debut in the WWE at a live event on July 7th, 1988. And due to Chairman Vince McMahon's desire to have his performers carry WWE exclusive ring names, Michaels and Giannetti were renamed simply as the Rockers. Michaels headlined his first WWE pay-per-view main event when the Rockers were involved in a 4 on 4 Survivor Series match of the 1989 Survivor Series. The Rockers proved to be a very popular tag team but would eventually split in December of 1991 during an incident on Brutus Beefcake's barbershop. Michaels super kicked Giannetti and threw him through a glass window on the set of Beefcake's talk show. Giannetti returned to the WWE the following year and enjoyed moderate success before leaving the company in 1994, while Michaels became a prominent villain of the early to mid-1990s. At the suggestion of Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, Michaels adopted the name The Heartbreak Kid. He was put together with new manager Sensational Sherry, who even sang the first version of his new theme music, Sexy Boy. Some standout moments for Shawn Michaels in this period of his career was teaming with his former bodyguard Diesel for two tag team championship reigns. Also his legendary match with Razor Ramon at WrestleMania 10 for the Intercontinental Championship which was voted Match of the Year by Pro Wrestling Illustrated. And of course Shawn Michaels two legendary Royal Rumble wins. He won the 1995 and the 1996 Royal Rumble, entering at number one in 1995, lasting all the way to the end, going over 38 minutes in the ring, and in 1996, entering at 18 to take it out. And with that Rumble win in 96, he would then go on to face Bret Hart in the main event of WrestleMania 12 in the first ever 60-minute Iron Man match for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. The two would battle to a 60 minute time limit draw and the match would be ordered to restart in sudden death overtime which Shawn Michaels would take his first ever WWF Championship. You know it's like we need to do this but we don't know how it's going to happen. You Shawn have to tell us how this is going to happen. Wow. You have to go in there and take that belt off him in some form or fashion. Wow. You and Earl Hebner, you've either got to hold him down and pin him. You've got, there's got to be some kind of opportunity where you can do this. Yes, the infamous Montreal screw job that occurred November 9, 1997 at WWE Survivor Series. It was Bret Hart who had won the WWF World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam just a few months earlier. And it was a week prior to Survivor Series that Bret Hart had signed a contract to perform with WCW beginning in December of 1997. Vince McMahon did not want Bret Hart to leave the company as champion, but Hart was unwilling to lose the title to Michaels at Survivor Series in his home country. The plan was executed when match referee Earl Hebner, on direct order from McMahon, ended the match as Michaels held Hart in the sharpshooter, Hart signature finishing move, even though Bret Hart had not submitted. Michaels was declared the victor by submission and crowned as the new WWF World Heavyweight Champion. Fast forward to January 2010 on an episode of Monday Night Raw, it was Bret Hart who called out Shawn Michaels to bury the hatchet. Hart and Michaels then aired their grievances with one another while recognizing that their Iron Man match at WrestleMania 12 ought to be the highlight of their relationship rather than the Montreal screwjob. 
The pair shook hands and Michaels turned as if to deliver sweet chin music, but instead chose to embrace Hart. Now many cast doubts on the sincerity of this reconciliation, but Bret Hart has confirmed that it was indeed genuine, as did Michaels, and acknowledged that he felt that Michaels had changed as a person for the better. The rebel group Degeneration X was officially born October 1997 with original members Shawn Michaels, Triple H, China and Rick Rude. Rick Rude would leave the group however after the 1997 Montreal Screwjob when he was legitimately upset about the actions which took place that night and he would leave DX to return to WCW. Vince McMahon was hesitant to originally put the group together for its over the top brash and provocative nature. But after seeing the success of DX and how it was getting over with the fans, he embraced the idea and let the group run with it. D-Generation X even got its own pay-per-view name in December of 1997 with D-Generation X in your house. We're sure Michaels headlined the event and was disqualified in a WWF World Heavyweight Championship title defense against Ken Shamrock. At the 1998 Royal Rumble, Michaels received a serious back injury in a casket match against The Undertaker. Michaels would still go on to win the match and successfully retain his WWF World Heavyweight Championship. He took a back body drop to the outside of the ring and hit his lower back on the casket, causing him to herniate two discs and crush one completely. At WrestleMania 14, DX recruited boxer Mike Tyson to act as the special enforcer in the main event of the night, featuring Michaels against Stone Cold Steve Austin. At the end of the match, Tyson would turn on D-Generation X and cost Michaels the match. The back injury that Shawn Michaels had suffered against The Undertaker at the Royal Rumble would sideline him from in-ring competition for four years. However, in those four years, Michaels would return in guest spots as WWF Commissioner. After four years absence from in-ring action, Shawn Michaels would return to the WWE in 2002. Upon return, Shawn Michaels would feud with longtime friend and ally Triple H and challenge the game to a non-sanctioned match at SummerSlam. In that same year, Michaels would win the World Heavyweight Championship from Triple H in the first ever Elimination Chamber match. However, Michaels' reign as champion would come to an end only one month later when he would lose the championship to Triple H in a three stages of hell match at Armageddon. Some standout moments in Michael's second run would of course include the reformation of the popular stable D-Generation X, some big time WrestleMania matches with the likes of Chris Jericho, Kurt Angle, John Cena, retiring Ric Flair at WrestleMania 24, and of course who could forget the legendary matches between Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker at both WrestleMania 25 and WrestleMania 26. Shawn Michaels would lose to The Undertaker at WrestleMania 26 and as a result he was forced to retire due to the match stipulation, just the same way HBK had ended Ric Flair's career. And the following night on the March 29 episode of Monday Night Raw, Michaels gave an emotional farewell speech departing with the familiar sentence, quote, Shawn Michaels has left the building. Michael's first marriage to Teresa Wood soon ended in an amicably settled divorce. He then married his current wife, a former WCW Nitro girl, Rebecca, known as Whisper, in March of 1999 at the Graceland Wedding Chapel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Only the couple and an Elvis impersonator were present. Their son Cameron was born in January 2000 and their daughter Cheyenne born in August 2004. Michaels is a born-again Christian. He was raised a Catholic, but became a non-denominational Christian because of his wife. Following his conversion, his later ring attire often incorporated cross symbols, and he often made a praying gesture on his knees during ring entrances. Shawn Michaels headlined major pay-per-view events between 1989 and 2010, closing the company's flagship annual event, WrestleMania, five times. He would go on to be widely regarded as the finest performer in the 1990s and 2000s, winning the Pro Wrestling Illustrated Match of the Year reader vote a record 11 times. 
and Michaels was also voted the greatest professional wrestler of all time in a 2011 poll of the WWE roster. Michaels is a four-time world champion, having held the WWE Championship three times and WWE's World Heavyweight Championship once. He is also a two-time Royal Rumble winner, the first WWE Grand Slam champion, and the fourth WWE Triple Crown champion, as well as a 2011 WWE Hall of Fame inductee. And let's not forget about Shawn Michaels' in-ring return in 2018. It was on the October 8th edition of Monday Night Raw that Michaels appeared with Triple H and announced that he was coming out of retirement to reform D-Generation X. It was at Crown Jewel that D-Generation X took on the Brothers of Destruction, Kane and Undertaker, and they won that match. However, afterwards, Michaels confirmed that he would be going back into retirement. Thanks heaps guys for tuning into the video, be sure to drop a scorpion death drop on that like button and subscribe to the channel for more awesome pro wrestling action from the WWE, the WCW and much more.